Greetings, friends. Why did our ancestors make a golden calf? What does it have to do with us today, 3,300 years later? This was a very serious event. Because of it, Hashem was prepared to eliminate the entire generation which he liberated from Egypt. In the words of Rabbi Samson Rufal Hirsch, Hashem said in effect to Moshe Rabbeinu, if you do not intercede and no one comes forward to help the people weather the crisis and mend their ways, there is no alternative but to destroy them. This generation was literally playing with fire. Rabbi Hirsch points out that the calf was not made to represent Hashem. It was made to represent Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem was not missing. Moshe was missing. This tells the entire story. The people simply could not comprehend the idea of Hashem. They could not, they could comprehend the person who is an intermediary between us and Hashem. We all know what a person is, right? But Hashem Lahavdil, who comprehends Hashem? This is so beautiful. This is the reason Hashem gave us the Torah. We can live the Torah, and that is how we become closer to Hashem. By living the Torah, we become new people. If you try to know Hashem without the Torah, you fail. What does it mean to have a relationship with the ruler of the universe? Why do we have so much trouble with something that is not corporeal? Why is our frame of reference so connected with material things? We have a body. The usual method of locating ourselves is physical. I look around and I know where I am, right? I live on a certain street in a certain city. Right now, I'm sitting at my desk, at my computer. I'm recording uh, a, 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 um, my weekly video. That's where I am, right? And who am I? I'm six, five feet, six inches tall. My hair, anyway, used to be brown. And my eyes are blue. I have a social security number, or I have a te'udat zahut. Instead of identifying ourselves physically, is our work in life, our mission in life to identify ourselves spiritually. Elokai, neshama, shenasata bitaharahi, my God, the soul that you placed within me is pure. You created it. You fashioned it. You breathed it into me. I am a neshama that Hashem created. That is who I am. But, uh, you know, Newberger, you're not telling me anything I don't know already. I know this. Yes, that's correct. We know it. But trying to understand, to assimilate that basic fact is the work of a lifetime. And this is what we have to do if we want to avoid worshiping the golden calf. I am not a social security number. I am not a number on a two, that's a hood. I'm not a person who makes a certain salary and works in a certain job. I am a neshama. I am a soul. We have built-in resistance. It's called the Yetzirah, the evil inclination. When one davens, one prays, and does not focus, it's because there is spiritual gravity, just like physical gravity. The Yetzirah is trying to pull our mind downwards, down toward the earth. 
It wants us to focus on the physical. The more basic, the better. Asav focused on red stew. That is what interested him, red meat. That is what the Yetzer Hara wants us to do, wants to do to us. Hashem is up and spiritual gravity is trying to pull us down. And I try to have Kavana concentration when I'm saying a bracha to comprehend each word and to understand to whom I am speaking. I feel a huge spiritual fight over each word, each time. The Eight Sahara is fighting me. The Eight Sahara is a spiritual being apparently within us that is trying to direct our neshama to focus on physical phenomena. Yaakov Avino, our father Jacob, fought this spiritual being the entire night. He was exhausted by the effort, but he did not stop. That is perhaps why he appeared so old in front of Paro. His entire life was a fight. My friends, we're in the long light of night of exile. We're in a fight that seemingly never ends. As we say in the prayer in Kael Kelly, remember the exhausted nation. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein's at Saul was unhappy when he heard someone say, it's schwer to be a Yid. It's not schwer, it's not difficult, it's magnificent to be a Yid. Our entire existence is noble and great, but the work is strong. The fight against the Yid Sahara does not end until the day of death. Rabbi Tarfin says, the day is short, the task is abundant. The laborers are lazy. The wage is great. And the master of the house is insistent. Many of our ancestors in the desert failed the test. We're being tested now. It is up to us to prevail, to fight, not to give up. There will come a day of reward. The night will end. As we say in our davening every day, may you shine a new light on Sion. And may we all speedily merit its light. The sun will rise. Night will end. Yeshua Hashem, Kerif Ayan, the Yeshua comes suddenly when you least expect it. May we all see it soon in our days. Good Shabbos.